Good evening, everyone. 8 June 2013, and I'm Madhusudan Raj, your host for today. So last week, uh, the GDP growth numbers came out. Also came out the manufacturing purchasing managers index, and uh, both were quite disappointing. Disappointing for the business people and for the government and for the financial world. So I will discuss uh, why this growth is uh, decelerating right now and why this uh, manufacturing activity is actually slowing down and with that there were other uh, important news also regarding uh, uh, Subaru's command and uh, a spat of mazes by the Indian government and RBI to put some kind of you know ban on the import of gold items coins bars etc because the current account deficit is widening and the gold import was jumping so let us start with this GDP growth number which came out last week 31st May uh, GDP growth slides to 4.8 percent in quarter 4 uh, fiscal year 2013, uh, 2012 and 13 the overall uh, GDP figure was 5 percent and in quarter 4 uh, the number was 4.8 percent which is you know quite disappointing for the mainstream uh, economists, for the government, for the financial world, for the business people. Uh, they say that on expected lines for the government, though disappointing for India Incorporated, the country's GDP growth rate slid to 4.8% in the fourth quarter January March on account of dismal so of three major sectors, agriculture, manufacturing and mining. Uh, as I said, see why this growth is actually growing down is simply because the way in which these people are measuring gross domestic product. So these are all actually nominal figures, you know, expressed in terms of price of the goods and services which are produced in the economy in a given period of time, usually one year. So the moment, so I told you in, you know, in my future post also that the moment government pumps a lot of money, this nominal figure goes up because the price at which you know, these goods and services are valued, that price goes up. So even if the production is not going up, it looks like that the GDP is going up. That means the monetary value of the goods and services which are being produced in an economy that only goes up the nominal value only goes up even if you actually you know adjust for the inflation and calculate real gdp number then even that will not be able to gauge the real economic performance of the economy because the index number is all faulty and as i said you can't measure value through prices because you know value is purely subjective and it cannot be measured by any indexes like wpi or cpi so what happens, you know, for the government and for the mainstream economists and all other people, uh, GDP growth means when, when money, you know, is being pumped by the RBI, central bank, and when the growth figure goes up, they say that the economy is booming, the economy is growing because the nominal figures are going up. But what is actually happening is the production is actually not taking place. And whatever production is taking place, the benefit of that higher production in terms of lower prices is not being passed on to the consumer because the RBI is side by side printing a lot of money and creating inflation and because of that prices instead of going down either they stabilize or they go up. So the real benefit of the production of real economic goods as I said you know is not passing on to the consumers we are facing rising prices since I, I, I think time immemorial but in any case, because, you know, since, you know, uh, last one and a half year or so, RBI is very cautious about inflation. So it has stopped uh, pumping a lot of money. The money growth rate has slowed down. And that is the reason why you see these numbers going down. And not only that, you know, uh, because of this government and uh, RBI, central bank's intervention into the economy, the whole production structure of the economy is right now in a vac, right? It's completely mill adjusted you know a lot of mill investment has taken place mostly in the capital goods sector of the economy the manufacturing sector so that's where the adjustment is to, you know uh, taking place but the government and the rbi is not allowing that adjustment to take place by pumping money more and more and by meddling with the economic adjustment in the form of recession more and more so that is the reason 
why right now there is a lot of uh, what we call a, a regime uncertainty in the economy so this this you know uh, managers and factory owners are quite unsure of what is going to happen in future so that's why they're holding on on their production processes you know most of the people who started their plants now they are lacking you know they you know based on you know the money cheap credit which is given by the rbi now that cheap credit is is not available because the interest had interest rates have gone up a little bit so that's why they've halted all the production processes this is a typical business cycle you know process where recession is going on and if they don't allow this recession to run its natural course and you know liquidate all this mail adjustment this kind of scenario will continue in future also where the economy will be quite unstable we will mostly see stagflation kind of situation we are already seeing that on one side economy is stagnating and on the other side inflation is not going down you know their numbers are going down but actually the real inflation in the market is you know in double digits right now anyway so this growth is you know going down as i already said you know i think in my uh, last couple of you know videos in past where this will happen but you know many people are saying this as a, some kind of positive sign they're saying that they're cheering that okay now so the number has gone down so maybe rbi's policy will tilt into the direction of economic growth now because they are thinking that rbi is balancing between economic growth and inflation there is actually no trade off between inflation and economic growth but they think that there is a trade off and rbi will have to right now care take care of inflation so that's why they are not focusing on growth but because the growth number has gone down so much so maybe now they will stop worrying about the inflation and they will start pumping money into the economy and increase these nominal growth figures so they are saying uh, uh, what is the problem <clears throat> the grim gdp numbers appear to have brightened the prospects of a rate cut by the rbi in june along with the probable easing of the crr cash reserve ratio despite the anxieties expressed by the rbi governor this overall so they're thinking that the number has gone down so now the rbi is is in a quite comfortable place they can have they can use this excuse that look the growth figure has you know gone down so that's why they want to pump a lot of money by reducing rate reducing crr so they are thinking that that's what they are going to do we will have to see what they are going to do on i think 18 june they are coming up with the next policy statement but in any case growth number has gone down and as i said the purchasing power a uh, purchasing managers index is also uh, down it was uh, down from 51 in april to 50.1 in may uh, this is the lowest uh, print since march 2009 so this is just another sign of business cycle where uh, managers and business owners are not quite sure and basically whatever project they started based on cheap credit that cheap credit is not available right right now so they have halted the production processes as i said the production structure is right now liquefying itself from the capital goods sector to the consumer goods sector and if uh, it is allowed to you know readjust itself the economy can you know go on to its normal course you know again but that's what is not happening rbi is continuously madling in fact they're pumping every day something like 1 trillion rupees into the market um by using their liquidity adjustment facility window uh, that i will discuss later on but actually the economy is right now in trouble we have to see what they're going to do and as i said if they if they lower the interest rate in future or and you know as long as they're meddling with the economy they're meddling with the market interest rate the the economy is not going to recover economy will only recover when the government stops meddling when the rbi stops manipulating the market interest rate they stop all their activities they stop inflation and allow the economy to just recover on its own they should take away all their interventionist measures stop you know manipulating with the weight system stop manipulating with the price system whatever price is interest rate wages etc they will have to stop manipulating all these prices and they will have to allow the market forces and demand and supply to function freely let it adjust all these prices and only then the situation will come back to normal as long as that is not happening as long as the government and rbi is interfering into the market uh, the recovery is not going to be there the economy will continue to experience this boom and bust cycles anyways after this you know our government subara was commanding 
uh, many people are saying that he is uh, he's inflation warrior. So he was saying that, oh, no, no, I'm not inflation warrior. Actually, what I'm doing is I'm following so many different kind of um, uh, objectives, you know, simultaneously. Uh, he was saying that, uh, he said that the RBI was keeping track of growth, inflation, and balance of payments. And importantly, it was chasing the monsoon. So, so one guy is, you know, trying to balance uh, uh, growth, inflation, and balance of payments simultaneously also chasing monsoon. Why he's chasing monsoon? Because he thinks that if there is good monsoon this year, agricultural production will be higher and that will you know, help or reduce the prices. <clears throat> but as I said, it's not going to help uh, reduce the prices as long as he is pumping money into the market via different kind of you know, tools which you know, RBI is having. So he's actually trying to play God here. One man is trying to balance, you know, uh, keeping track of growth and inflation and balance of payment and monsoon. It is impossible, this thing. You know, you can't play God like that with the economy. Even if the God comes down to earth, he will not be able to manage the economy because it is very complex, right? The natural laws of human action have, you know, uh, evolved the free market system to handle all these things inflation and growth and balance of payment etc so as long as he is praying God I don't think so economy is going to recover or get onto its you know, normal course of path it will you know, remain into shambles because one man cannot manage all this thing it is impossible for one guy to understand desires needs you know aspirations, subjective values of more than 120 crore people. How does he know what the market interest rate should be? How does he know what kind of you know, quantity of money should be available in, in the economy? His econometric models are all useless, right? Because they cannot measure anything. They cannot predict anything. We have seen that time and again, they were completely clueless about the coming disaster in 2007. So if, as long as Subarao is, you know, trying to play God or any other guy, not only Subarao, any one guy is manipulating, uh, we are in trouble. <clears throat> okay, so I think uh, basically he should resign and dismantle his RBI if he thinks that and let the market, you know, correct all this thing. Not only that, as I said, he is not an inflation warrior. He said that I'm just trying to balance the growth and inflation he's not an inflation warrior but i'm sure he's an inflation god because he's creating a lot of inflation into this economy but i told you that right now the rbi is frustrated you know that the banks are not lending you know to in the market you know basically what they're doing is whatever money rbi is giving them they are sitting on that so there was this news rbi may cut open market operations omos to pro bulky banks on rate cuts they are saying that Bank is just profiting on this repo and reverse repo processes. They are just um, buying and selling bonds from the RBI and you know profiting on that interest gap on that instead of lending that money into the economy. So I think that is good. In fact, right now they're not, they are not lending. They are not lending because the overall investment environment is you know quite very. Business people are quite worried that they don't know what's going to happen. Suddenly, maybe the interest rate jumps up and all their projects are in trouble. So they are, you know, uh, quite understandably worried about the, all this thing. But the RBI is very keen that they think that if they pump a lot of money and if the banks start to lend this money in the economy, then economic growth is going to take place. But as, as I said, that's not economic growth. That is just, you know, papering over and creating a lot of, you know, uh, distortions in, into the production structure of the economy. So they are saying that instead it would lend to banks through its daily funds window. They are just thinking like directly giving some kind of cash to the banks and forcing them, them to lend that money to the market. If that happens, you can imagine where the prices will go. You know, already the you know, price inflation is so high and if they will start lending this money banks, then I'm sure inflation will spike like anything. Anyways, uh, lastly, as I said, uh, after this uh, import figure came out of gold, gold import was something like 160, 132 ton uh, in uh, May and uh, government was quite alarmed. They think that this is what is, you know, basically <clears throat> increasing the current account deficit. 
and they want uh, to basically stop the thing so immediately after that they announced many different you know uh, steps you know they basically ban import may gold import jump more cups possible uh, they ban uh, <clears throat> First of all, what they did was they increased the import duty on gold and platinum. On gold from 6%, they increased the duty, import duty to 8%. And after that, the uh, finance minister Chidambaram was advising banks that they should not sell gold coins to people. Uh, they also imposed restriction on premium trading houses. Uh, else is to be hacked by 100% cash. So, you know, you cannot buy gold on credit. You have to... 100% cash if you want to you know, import gold from outside. Uh, he banned import from cooperative banks also. Uh, finance minister was urging banks to advise clients not to invest in gold. So they are doing uh, everything that is possible for them to ban people and from buying gold and diverting them into all kind of phony paper promise products. Like you know, I told in my last report, uh, inflation index bond it's not actually anything concrete anything real as it is just paper but as I said these measures are likely to fail because uh, the moment they will put import bans uh, the illegal channel so-called illegal channel smuggling will start and many people are expecting that to happen so all these government measures are going to fail like they failed in past also and I think gold people should continue to buy gold because Inflation is not going to abate and RBI is not going to stop, you know, creating money out of thin air. They will continue to, you know, do that. And as long as they're doing that, inflation is not going to calm down. Growth figures will continue to rise and fall because the moment they pump money, inflate, you know, growth will go up nominal figures. The moment they stop that, because the inflation will also go up. The moment they stop that, the growth figure will go down. Ultimately, they are just creating... Uh, a total mass into our economy and we will have to suffer because of them so our only protection right now is gold silver and other hard assets so you know i suggest that you people continue to accumulate gold and silver and other hard, hard asset and you know stay away from any kind of paper products because ultimately all paper products will uh, go to its you know a real value zero right just paper so all right then, um, thank you very much for watching me and I'll be coming soon. I think on 18 June they are going to come out with, RBI is going to come out with their uh, another policy statement. So I think I will come back at that time and discuss what they're doing. Basically it's gonna be the same thing, mostly inflation. Nothing more the RBI and government can do. It's pretty, you know, it's getting actually pretty boring right now. I feel like why don't you just print a bunch of money and finish with, you know, finish with hyperinflation, rack the economy completely. So at least we can start afresh from, you know, a new, you know, out of this, you know, you know, ruins of the economy. At least, at least people will be convinced at that time that government and RBI cannot help anyone. They can only destroy the economy, right? But I know they will not do that because they, they want to kill the, you know, you know, economy slowly. If they do it quickly, then people will realize who the real culprits are and in that case their future will be in trouble so they will slowly kill all of us they're squeezing us slowly they're screwing us slowly but in the end as i said the system will crash you know without the crash i don't think so economy can go on to its normal path all right then thank you very much for watching me uh, goodbye